Ryotaro Dojima is the first person you interact with as a player in Persona 4 Golden. He's your mom's younger brother, your uncle, and the person taking you in for the next year in the Japanese countryside. Dojima is a detective with the Inaba PD, and you barely get to see him before he gets wrapped up into the case. What you do see, though, is someone who seems very superficially friendly, but also not lying about the friendliness deep down. He's well-meaning, a bit tired, maybe. There's an air that he's putting on a face for when he introduces himself, but the plain, stern-faced Dojima stays on a majority of the time once the case actually begins, which ends up making the time he smiles even more worthwhile, in retrospect. To be cut and dry here, Dojima is struggling with the death of his wife Chisato over the course of the game, who we find was run over on her way to pick Nanako up from school. Notably, while the killer has never been caught, Chisato's death is seemingly completely unrelated to anything else that happens in Persona 4 Golden, which I think drives home a bit more of the helplessness Dojima feels. The killer has never been caught. Over the course of his social link, we learn more small things about Dojima and how his family used to be before this happened. How Chisato used to be the one to spend more time with Nanako, and now that she's dead and he hasn't caught the killer, he feels not only guilty, feeling Nanako can't rest with the killer unspotted, but also unworthy of being her father, of filling the role his beloved wife did before him. Match that with what he says in his social link about Nanako looking more and more like Chisato as she gets older, and it's a recipe to make him want to run away. Dojima is one of the few people who respond well to blunt criticism in Persona 4. While a lot of other characters want you to just agree with them and butter them up, Dojima doesn't take aggression to being blatantly called a coward multiple times in his link. I think this has a few blatant things about him. He's stern, sometimes he doesn't understand, sometimes he's bullheaded, but he thinks his actions through before he acts, and he generally respects you and takes you into consideration. He takes time considering the things that are said and gives them consideration in their own right, something that is a good trait in a detective. Dojima's social link is about him overcoming the death of his wife, sure, definitely but it's more so about reaffirming his bond both with his daughter, Nanako, who he learned to fully embrace and love again, and his work, which before he used to run away, and now he will use with pride to chase other people who are running, to keep what's left of his family and his hometown safe. You get the sense that Dojima doesn't take failure lightly, and I don't just mean like when Nanako dies, anyone would take that hard. When it comes to small leaks in the case, professionalism, when it comes to finding out or feeling anxious that they got the wrong perp, as he would say, and of course the guilt he feels with the murderer being right under his nose as well once Adachi is exposed. The game wants you to ask, why? What makes Dojima so concerned with success and so averse to failure that taking extra steps is a defining part of his M.O.? I think it's because what he hates most is feeling helpless, like there's nothing in the world that he could do. He fought to deny that helplessness by fruitlessly looking over the minuscule evidence to find Chisato's killer, even though he knew it was helpless. He knew in the back of his mind it was just a denial, but if he admitted it, he couldn't do it. It would mean admitting to being a victim, admitting to being someone helpless to unfortunate circumstances, a victim of chance. That idea terrifies Dojima. It takes the power out of his hands in a way that he can't ever reclaim. And so you always get the feeling that even when he's relaxing, that he's feeling a little bit on edge. I think a lot of people like Dojima because he fits the archetype of someone that everybody has known or seen. That stern, slightly out of touch, but well-meaning dad. And he really fits that to a T. The place where the out of touch seems to hinder him, though, is in his confidence of the next generation. And some of that isn't totally his fault. I mean, if a slacker like Adachi was your idea of the next generation, and when you tried to sweat them into becoming a stronger person, they weaseled out of it, I'm sure you'd get frustrated too, especially when they were assigned under you in a town that you take very seriously protecting. The place it comes into negative is with Naoto, though. As due to Naoto's young age, a drunken Dojima is able to speak how he feels more honestly, calling Naoto a twerp, and that the Inaba PD doesn't need the help of some darn kid. This goes back to that central fear though. Dojima lives here. He was married to his wife here. He started a family here, had a daughter here. His precious daughter is here. Inaba is his home. He spent years on the force protecting it. 
And now his pride has been crippled, knowing he couldn't even protect the person closest to him. And now? Now? The police force and provincial government has determined that he is not effective enough and thinks a kid can do his job better than he can. That's got to feel humiliating. It's got to make him feel helpless. I know this segment is a bit different from the way I approached many of the other character videos, and due to that, it's honestly a lot shorter, but I hope you're enjoying the analysis so far. And if you want to see more, I'd ask please if you'd like, comment your thoughts so far, as well as at the end of the video, if you have some. And I hope you stick around for the channel for the much longer, more in-depth videos pertaining to Persona 4 Golden, and possibly other games in the future. Now then, the relationship that you develop both in and out of your social link for Dojima is uniquely interesting, mainly because regardless of how you finish his link or don't even start it, he can't help but feel slightly paranoid about how you seem to tie yourself into all of the relevant events in the story. With the letter Dojima finds, it's enough to have him finally bring you into the station, and it creates an interesting dynamic between how the player perceives the scene. If you've done some of his link, and especially if you finished it, this confrontation feels like it's a bit emotional for Dojima. Like, whether you tell him the truth or not, Dojima is straight-laced. He's not going to believe some crazy left-field magic TV world story, and he's good enough to see through you if you try to lie about that. No matter what, you can imagine Dojima feels hurt, though. He doesn't know your involvement. He doesn't want you involved. He wants you safe. You've done so much to help him grow and reconnect with the person he loves the most, but you're willing to lie to his face? And about something that has been frustrating him for months on end? What's your game? In a situation related to this case, where people are dying, it hurts him that you don't seem to trust him enough like he trusts you. And the fact that his stubbornness and need to avoid feeling helpless and used causes him to keep his walls up and not listen is even more tragic. That's probably why, as well as a hundred other reasons, why Dolgema's freakout over the Nanako incident is so emotional. To see a man fighting, sometimes desperately scrambling, to hold on to the last bits of personal security that he has, never feeling that he had the time, place, or opportunity to show weakness, having everything taken from him, one piece at a time, that despite his constant stoic pressure, it wasn't enough. He wasn't enough. His ultimate admittance to helplessness in his drop to the knees, he can't bother with putting up a wall anymore. Give me back Nanako! Give her back! She's... She's all I have! She's... The only one in the world! But even then, it doesn't stay down for long. He continually opens up his wounds, gets out of his room, despite being warned about permanent damage. Because if he's not doing something, if he's crippled into a single room, he feels helpless. Like he can't do anything to help at all. The writing is even more cruel, no doubt, having Dojima move as fast as he can with his injuries to see Nanako in her critical state before barely arriving too late. Not to focus too hard on the sad part, but it's clear why Dojima's a fan favorite, and his arc, the truth he had to face, was that no matter how much you don't like it, no matter how hard you try, sometimes some things are truly out of your control. But even if some things are, you're not helpless, and those things happening in your life aren't your fault. Dojima gives you his old bike in Persona 4 Golden. He comes to see you not as a son, but as a little brother, as he tells you flat out in the story, a brother who has helped put his family back together. But in that moment at the station, he says he feels like a fool, and you can tell he doubts that you'll ever feel the same way he does. I wonder if he feels shame and thinks that he let himself be too emotionally vulnerable with you, or that he made a fool of himself to you. It's things like these that make Dolgema such a likable character, despite him being somewhat neglectful of Nanako for much of the story, especially the earlier parts. He's easy to read, but takes a while to understand. The name Ryotaro refers, among other things, to strength, and something big, thick, or stable. Ryotaro wants to be a pillar of himself and the ones that he loves, the focus point of strength, the thing holding the house up, the person protecting. Taro is also the suffix added to male names of the eldest sons in families. While younger than your mother, he is, as far as we know, the oldest son from Yu's grandparents. Really, though, it's likely a nod to him, seeing himself more as an older brother to you, rather than an uncle. His name making reference to being the older brother, the oldest son. 
Lyotaro Dojima is the Hierophant Arcana, and there are many things about this card that reflect into his character. The Hierophant within the card is the revealer of the sacred, someone who is open to others. Dojima's closed-off, defensive, and skeptical nature through the game slowly becomes warmer and cracked open as you move your way through the game, through the good moments and the bad, until eventually Dojima has opened himself back up to his family and has mostly moved on from Chisato's death, finally. The Hierophant also represents the opening of the inner voice. When we meet Dojima, his inner voice is distorted and only able to be let out roughly when he's intoxicated. But when we end, he is sober and smiling once again. Not fake, but genuinely joyously this time. The Hierophant card is positioned by Taurus, and Ryotaro Dojima is also a Taurus himself, being born on May 16th. On the outside, the Hierophant is authority, but on the inside, it is the voice of the inner teacher. Authority over others through supersession, or authority over apprenticeship. Dojima is your guardian. He can tell you yes and no, but while he is trying to help raise and teach you, he finds himself learning just as much as you do along the way. The Hierophant also represents wisdom. As your guardian, he is your elder. And as a co-worker to the PD, he is wise to the way procedures are held out. The symbol made by the Hierophant's hand is a Hundu Mudra, meaning what you see isn't what you get. When you meet Dojima, he seems approachable, if not a bit stern, friendly, and open, but in fact, he is grieving, suffering with guilt and feeling closed off just not to you, but his daughter as well. On the lower polarity, it is the shadow of power, the misuse of authority, missing the point, lacking wisdom and understanding. When you first meet Dojima, he won't even let you go out at night. The game says that he's exerting his authority over you. And multiple times throughout the early part of his link, he opts to exercise authority over Nanako instead of truly listening to her feelings. When he takes you into the station, he's missing the point, but by the end, he even mentions being open to the idea that other things may have been happening that he never realized or could have never understood. Instead of feeling helpless, he feels at peace. He's admitting here that there was stuff that he maybe just wasn't in the position to understand or accept at that time. Dojima is a well-beloved character for many reasons, and hopefully this spread insight onto who his character is, what drives him, and some of the other aspects of his arcana and name that have not been already evident. If you want to hear more information about Dojima, I recommend you check out my video on Nanako, as well as my color theory video to talk about his design a little bit more. If you enjoyed this video, please share, turn on notifications, and watch other videos in the series. I can't guarantee which ones are or aren't out, but I can guarantee that more videos are coming out unless you're watching this way in the future. So please stick around and see whatever comes out. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you soon.